Okay, and we are live. Hello, web shadowers. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, this is our second session of the summer for week three. And this session is gonna be a little different from our usual sessions. Um, today we have a Q&A session with Melissa Gonzalez, who is going to talk to us about her um, first year of medical school. And um, we welcome all and any questions you guys have for her. Um, we're super excited about this session. And because it's a little different, this session is not gonna count for virtual shadowing hours, but it will count for participation and education. So we still have a Google form to fill out so we can verify your participation. And that'll be sent out into the chat box and in the description of this video at the end of the session. With that being said, Melissa, you can get started whenever you're ready. Great, thank you so much. Um, hi everyone, my name is Melissa and I'm very excited to be here um, sharing with you guys about my experience, um, my first year of medical school that just finished up a few weeks ago and um, hopefully answer a lot of your questions. I think that'll be the majority of the time. Um, and you know, I always love answering questions because I had a lot of questions when I was applying to med school or when I was a pre-med. So um, please feel free to um, send your questions in. Um, I'm gonna start off by sharing a little bit about me. If uh, I'm, you know, you guys don't know me, so here we go. I am from Southern California, born and raised. And um, I went to Georgetown in DC, which, you know, going across the country for, for college was an experience, um, but I really enjoyed my time there. And Washington DC is such a beautiful city. And I um, was there uh, the week before everything was locked down last March. So um, it was, um, I hope to go back soon. And I was a psychology major and I also had a minor in art. And um, yeah, I, I was involved with some shadowing and uh, volunteering at the campus hospital and uh, a little bit of psych research. So that's just kind of my experience at Georgetown. Um, and then after graduating, I took two years between um, college and med school. And in those two years, I did a few things. I think, the most important part of that time was making sure I was prepared to apply to med school. And so I took the MCAT, studied for about three and a half months, four months. Um, and the process of applying to med school, as I'm sure most of you know, is about a year or so. So in that first year, I was gearing up to apply. And then that second year um, was the whole process of applying and writing personal statements and secondaries and interviews. Um, but during those two years, I also was working two part-time jobs. Um, thankfully, both of them were almost all remote. So I could, you know, my favorite thing to do was go to Starbucks, study for a few hours, then do some work for a few hours and then keep studying. Um, and so I was doing some marketing assistant work for a small sunscreen company, which was very interesting. I really enjoyed my time there seeing um, that side of business. And then I also did a nonprofit capital campaign assistant job um, and that was um, a whole new thing, a whole new world to me, like raising capital funds for a nonprofit. And um, I learned a lot through that and actually came up in one of my interviews. So you don't have to do something very specific to medicine. Um, and that just goes to show that all of these just things make you unique. And when you're applying, they do come up. So um, think about that when you're, if you take some gap years. Um, and now I'm in med school in LA, uh, not far from where I was born and raised. So it's been really nice, especially during the pandemic and being in med school for the first, for the first year and you know the struggles that come along with that. Um, being close to my family, I'd see them quite often. I was just there the past few days. So um, that's been really nice. And some you know general interests right now are family medicine, primary care, uh, dermatology, psych, and OB-GYN. And OB-GYN was, a surprise for me. I never thought about OBGYN um, as a pre-med or at any time in my life. And we finished our first year of med school with a repro block and it was just so fascinating and um, super interesting. And so we'll see where I end up in a few years, but those are kind of my general interests now. Um, and this photo, I, I love sharing because it, you know, when I was five, I was in preschool and this was like a, a book we wrote and um, that's me. And I, I said, when I grow up, I want to be a doctor. Um, so it's been a journey like since I was five. And of course, I thought about other things like an astronaut or interior designer. HGTV was the jam uh, back then. And so um, 
it just, you know, it's been a journey and it's been a long time coming and I'm so happy to be here right now, um, fulfilling that like very long t t term dream that I've had since I was you know, five. Um, so just kind of starting off about med school in a pandemic, <laughs> this is how I felt a lot this year. Um, so when I saw this meme, I thought it was hilarious. Um, and also just generally I enjoy art. And so when I saw this, I thought it was hilarious, but um, this is how basically that my first year of medical school went, which is not ideal, but that's what had to be done. And it went, it went fine. You know, there were some pros and cons, um, but gross anatomy was virtual. So it was basically like, like this meme. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but I have like no idea what like a, academic schedule look like for uh, medical school. I had a general idea of pre-clerkships, you know, learning about all the systems and then going into clerkships your third and fourth year. But um, that was like all I really knew. And so I kind of went into it, not blind, but, you know, just unaware of like what was to come until like I finally started school. And so I wanted to give a brief interview, I mean, brief overview of what my first year was like academically in the terms of the classes that we took. Um, to give you a rough idea. Um, and so we start off with two basic like introduction systems, um, intro to medical science is one and two, and that took up the first semester of med school. And so um, that was just, some of it was review from college, which was nice. And then really just getting into the basic science of medicine, which was, um, you know, throwback to the bio and chemistry days of college. Um, and then when we started our spring semester in January, we started with neurology and it was a long block and it was a lot <laughs> and very interesting. And um, I, I really enjoyed neurology. And then we went into GI and liver and repro. And so those are all the things that we learned this year um, in this first year and spread throughout those um, semesters in each system was gross anatomy. So some medical schools, do gross anatomy as like its own system. Um, and my, at my school, they kind of integrate into each system, which is, I think, kind of nice. You know, you're going along in your um, each system, you're learning about the gross anatomy in conjunction to all the pathology um, that you're learning. And another thing that I'd like to share about, um, you know, academics at my school, it is pass fail, which I believe most medical schools are now, but I think this has been such a blessing. <laughs> For me personally. Um, and I think it's something that a lot of pre-meds overlook when they're applying to med school is seeing if they're a pass-fail um, curriculum. And it really does make all the difference. Um, med school is hard enough. And I know as a pre-med, I really struggled um, uh, initially because, you know, I, I'm a first-gen student and like my parents didn't go to college. So um, going to college uh, on the East Coast away from family, you know, it was a big transition for me and the grades were um, not the best, right? And so in med school, the focus is like, you know, you're learning the material, but also it's not stressing over getting an A in, in, in and an exam because um, that's pretty difficult and people do it, um, but it's just so nice to not have to worry about that in our exams. So um, this is also kind of going along with this meme. I saw this and thought it was really funny. Um, and it's kind of true, at least for me personally. Um, and then, let's see if there's any questions. My uh, other part of medical school is like the clinical side um, outside of the lectures that we're learning about, you know, systems and the body. And so these are kind of just the clinical experiences that we had this last year, which were um, unfortunately, I think reduced because of COVID, but our school did their best to get us into the hospital um, with our ICM class, Introduction to Clinical Medicine, and we're put into these small groups of six with a, um, a physician who is our preceptor, and we go to the hospital um, some weeks, and we get to do patient interviews and physical exams, and then we also have other weeks where we do uh, physical exam um, practice and learn different parts of the physical exam, like, you know, the pulmonary exam, the cardio exam, the neuro exam, um, and then we're able to use those skills that we learn during that time in our encounters at the hospital or um, a clinic. And then something I didn't really know much about going to med school are OSCEs, which are these um, objective structured clinical examinations. And sounds like, <laughs> sounds kind of scary, but um, basically what it is, it's just 
you have a standardized patient, which is um, a person who's like an actor acting out an illness, um, and they're very good actors, so they do a really good job of convincing you that they have whatever um, uh, illness that's, that they come in with, and you basically have to do um, a patient history on them and also a physical exam that pertains to whatever um, brings them into the, to the clinic that day. And meanwhile, all of this is being recorded. You're being watched in a different room by the um, OSCE you know, faculty directors and the standardized patient is also grading you. And so um, it's a very good learning experience. Um, also very intimidating the first time we did it, although it was virtual the first time because we were just doing a physical um, uh, ex uh, patient history. But um, the second time we had our OSCE, it was in person and it was a whole new experience. Um, so just know that, you know, when you come to do these in the future when, in medical school, um, they end up being okay and you end up doing just fine. You know, you're really prepared. Um, faculty does a really great job of preparing you for these. Um, and I'm personally in the primary care program at my school, which is um, a cohort of like 25 of us that have an interest in primary care. And because we're in this program, we do some um, other activities throughout um, our time here. And so one of them is that being assigned to a community clinic. I'm personally in an FQHC, not too far from campus. And I go once, I would go once a month and I'd have a preceptor there and see patients, um, take patient histories and practice my physical exam skills and present to my preceptor. And then, you know, getting feedback from her and learning how to be a better um, presenter. And um, that was a really great experience because it was outpatient. And I think I'm generally more of a outpatient person. I don't have a lot of experience being in a hospital. So it's always kind of intimidating being in, in the hospital um, setting. Um, the non other non-clinical parts of our curriculum are uh, this class called PPM. And we have this every, we had this every Monday. And this one kind of was focused more on like um, learning about different patient populations and how to best care for them. And for example, we did a, um, a lecture on LGBTQ health, um, homeless health, and um, immigration um, health, you know, treating uh, undocumented immigrants in this country, which I find um, personally is very um, near my heart. Um, and so I really enjoyed this class because it was focusing on, you know, the other aspects of medicine. We don't, as future physicians, it's important to know um, all the science, but it's also very important to be able to treat patients with, um, you know, with dignity and respect and cultural awareness and humility. humility and I really enjoy that my um, school has a focus on this. And so also something else I didn't know going into med school are like these outside resources that are just, so abundant. Um, and so once you get to med school, you'll hear all about these, but I think it's important as a pre-med to maybe like start, um, just to like hear what these things are. I don't recommend that you use them as a, in college, but um, it, it was overwhelming my first week of school. I'm not going to lie. Um, and, uh, you know, thankfully my school has great academic support and it's all free. And so we have peer-to-peer -peer support. We have MS2s who can tutor us and you can meet with them as much as you want. Um, based on their schedule, of course, uh, to discuss um, classes, how they studied, how they recommend studying and preparing for the exam. And then we have these academic advisors, which are also great, two advisors for our school. Um, you can meet with them personally and they have a, bunch, uh, a lot of experience with um, academic advising and kind of catering studying um, to your needs and going with you and planning out um, study plans if you need them. And so I definitely took advantage of this. Um, because I did not take advantage of a lot of the resources in college. Um, and so I knew coming into med school, I was going to, you know, the first second I felt like I was struggling with the concept that I was going to reach out to somebody um, because there's a lot of um, material that gets, you know, built up on each other in med school. And so if you get behind, it's, it's, it's really hard to um, catch up. And I kind of talk about... Um, I put a picture of Sketchy right here, and I th think that's really fun. I think when you go to med school, you hear all about Sketchy, but this is the kind of stuff that we study <laughs> on these little videos that kind of like picture um, mind palaces or something like that. I don't know what they're called to help you remember like the microbiology and all the viruses and stuff like that. So something to look forward to when you're in med school. And I guess uh, this presentation, I just want to touch a little bit about the pandemic challenges. I thankfully we're, I think, coming out of this 
um, with all the vaccines, but um, I'll be in person this fall, which is very exciting. But this last year, it really was all virtual almost, except for our clinical experiences. And I'm, I'm sure um, if you're in school right now, you can relate to all of, all or maybe most of these. Um, yeah, the, you know, being at home all day has been, um, has, was a bummer and not having in-person gross anatomy and a virtual orientation, which is a good time to meet our classmates and make friends and explore our city um, was all virtual. And um, of course the administration did their best to, um, you know, get us oriented um, and to, you know, be able to communicate with our classmates. But um, that was a challenge. Um, and then also just being limited to my apartment to study was challenging. I'm a person who loves going to coffee shops and just spending hours there studying. And so that was difficult for me personally. Um, and then also no shadowing. It was until, it wasn't until last month that we got approved to shadow. And that was a big um, bummer because I think as a first year, that's a big focus is trying to shadow different specialties and getting an idea of what you might want to pursue. Um, so that's exciting now that we're able to do, do that. And I'm looking forward to doing that uh, more this summer. And also the standardized patient encounters, a lot of them are virtual at first. And um, it's, it's, it's not always um, the best format for when you're trying to like take a patient history with a standardized patient. So those are some challenges that I faced and I'm very excited that I think future um, med students, you know, incoming med students won't have to face these or they'll have a different experience, which is exciting. And I guess um, web shadowers, you know, they have this little template and they ask for advice for future physicians. And I think for me, um, because I struggled academically at first in college, you know, being first gen and not having anyone in my family who had been to college, I couldn't ask anybody about um, how many credits to take, like what are office hours? Like what, can, you know, why, why do I go to office hours? Um, and so for me, it, it was um, a journey to get to medical school. And it wasn't until I had a mentor tell me that, you know, med school is always gonna be there. Um, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> um, and so you need to find the path that works best for you to get there. And it's not, doesn't have to be this traditional path that we commonly hear about. Um, and so gap years are becoming more and more common. I think it's more common than not to have a gap year or two or three. I have classmates who have done some really cool things before med school and um, they just, it gives you a whole new perspective um, once you're here. And I think that's really great. So um, don't try and compare yourself to other people. I know it's easier said than done because um, I struggled with that. And um, just focus on you know how you can do your best and um, to find the best way for you to um, get to med school. Um, and yeah, that was just a really quick presentation. Um, and I also talk really fast too. So, um, I hope that there are some questions coming in. Um, okay, great. Yes. There are lots of questions coming in. Um, okay, cool. yeah, I'll just, I'll start reading them off for you. Um, to start, um, we have a question. What made you decide to go to med school and, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just start with that. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I, you know, my parents are immigrants from Mexico and as a young child, I'd hear a lot about um, the struggles that they had getting appropriate healthcare. And, you know, they had relatives or extended friends and family that, um, you know, passed away to like very um, curable things. And so as a kid, I was like, this doesn't make sense. Like, why can't there be more physicians? And so, I was kind of thinking, okay, I'll be a doctor and I'll go back there and, and help um, the people in my parents' like rural communities in Mexico. Um, and as I grew older, it was really solidified by um, a lot of the time I spent at a free clinic and um, shadowing there and volunteering there and just getting a feel for, you know, the impact that physicians can make in people's lives, especially um, treating underserved and uninsured or underinsured patients. and um, I think as a Spanish speaker as well, I think it's really important to care for people in their language. And um, that's kind of a long answer to like why I wanted to be a doctor. So um, thanks for the question. Perfect. And the next question is, just like there's a timeline for pre-meds, is there a medical student timeline on what to be doing every year, every summer for experience, et cetera? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it definitely varies 
between people. Um, I'm in my first summer, you know, after my first year, and um, all of us are doing very different things. I think a majority of us are doing some research. So I'm helping out with a couple of um, research projects this summer remotely um, just to occupy some of my time. Some students, you know, I think spend time relaxing after our first year. It's a pretty intense year of studying all the time. So it's really important, I think, for all of us to get some time to um, enjoy being with family and friends, um, especially now that things are a lot safer to, you know, to interact with people with vaccines. Um, and some people also shadow. So I'll be doing a couple of shadowing, um, this, a few shadowing uh, opportunities this summer. And it really is what you wanna make of it. It's not, this first summer is basically our last summer. Um, people like to say ever um, because, you know, once you finish med school and go into residency, you're not gonna get like a big summer break. So <laughs> I'm trying to make the most of this last summer. Um, and so, you know, your first year of medical school is really important to just do well on your classes and learn the material. So I think that's like the main focus. Um, and your second year, same thing, depending on your school's curriculum. Our school is, I believe, um, an 18th month pre-clerkship curriculum. So only 18 months of um, kind of like lectures. And then we go into our clerkships. And so those last two years are, um, you're rotating through the hospital and um, doing your core rotations um, and some others that you get to choose. And then your fourth year, you apply to residency and that um, takes up the majority of your time there. But um, there's not really anything that like you have to do, I'd say, um, you know, we're not required to do any shadowing or research. Um, although I guess my school does have a research project requirement, but it's not, it's not like we have to do a full blown like research, you know, um, publication and stuff like that. So those are all very much optional. And I think every student will be different in how they spend their time. Um, but that's a great question. Thanks. Thank you. And what made you choose Georgetown for undergrad? Yeah, um, I, so I'm from California and the eighth grade, like spring break field trip is to go to Washington DC. And so I went to that, I did that and I just like love DC. And I, I would always tell my parents like, oh, I want to go to Georgetown. Um, well, I never said I wanted to go to Georgetown because I didn't know what Georgetown existed until I was in high school. But, um, I knew I wanted to go to the East Coast for college because um, I kind of figured it would be like the last like big opportunity in my life to you know move to a different part of the country um, and explore that. So um, that was really nice. And I think I really enjoyed how it wasn't too big of a school. Um, it's like a medium sized school. So lectures are not that big. Um, our most, our biggest lecture was I think about 200 or 250 in our intro bio or intro chem classes. Um, and, but professors are always available to do, you know, talk to you in their office hours. And um, I really liked that, that um, that was a possibility at like a more medium sized school. And then just a generally DC is such an awesome city. It's so multicultural and um, I'm a big art person. So I would often go to the museums and um, they're all free. And so that was um, a very nice perk uh, being there. Great. And um, did you have a mentor that helped you with your application process for medical school? And um, what are some, what do you think helped your medical school application the most? Yeah, I think it's so important to have a good mentor. Um, it was unfortunate my freshman year of college, uh, my our pre-med advisors were not encouraging me to apply to med school as a, you know, I was a freshman, you know, it, it still had some time to apply, um, but they were very much like, you're not going to get into med school, so don't bother. And I believed them because I was like, oh, they're advisors, they know what they're talking about. Um, and so I didn't have the best experience with my pre-med advisor. So I ended up quitting being a pre-med. So after my first semester, I quit. And um, I was like, wow, this like lifelong dream of becoming a doctor is over. And um, thankfully, you know, I had some time to reflect and really think about what I wanted. And I knew that there had to be a way, right? And so I found other people that were better mentors and could guide me through the process. And um, so I think it's really important to find those people, whether that be upperclassmen or med students on your campus, um, physicians in your community that hopefully you can connect with in some way. Um, and so I did have a few mentors that you know helped guide my um, med school application um, process. I had someone who, really worked with me with my personal statement because I, I think it's so important 
uh, when you're applying to med school is how to differentiate yourself from the thousands of other applicants um, who are, you know, you all have amazing GPAs and MCATs, um, although I will say that's not necessary, um, uh, but you all have um, clinical experience and um, shadowing and maybe some research. So how can you differentiate yourself? And that really shows through your personal statement. Um, so I had a mentor for that and that was really helpful. And just, it was nice to have some, I knew some um, med students who I could just ask questions about interviews and get an idea and a feel for um, what I should look for in the medical schools that I was applying to. And what was the second question? I forgot. <laughs> it was, um, oh my gosh, what was it? Oh, what, what do you think helped your medical school application the most? Yeah, I think, um, so I did not have the best GPA applying to med school. That was like, I, I'd say like my biggest red flag, but um, I think what helped, you know, show that like I was, um, really, you know, in this and really wanted to become a physician was my personal statement telling a story um, that in telling a story about me and how that how my life influenced my decision to become a physician. And um, also, I did a lot of volunteering at my local free clinic. And that was a big part of my life. And um, about 10 years or so. So that was a big part of um, why I wanted to be a physician as well. So I think bringing those like two elements into my personal statement and showing that okay, I have all this like um, clinical experience and volunteer experience. Um, I'm really dedicated to this. And of course I don't, I'm not suggesting you have to volunteer somewhere for 10 years, but um, it, I think showing a dedication to something and definitely, definitely quantity over quality. I know we hear that a lot when you're applying to colleges too, but I think it's the same thing that applies to med school. Um, and so I think most importantly, sharing your story in a way that um, resonates with the admission committee and um, being true to yourself and genuine, um, as cheesy as that sounds, I think it's so important. And don't try and write your personal statement in a way that you think that um, that you think that they want to uh, read, you know. And so um, be true to yourself, and I think that that'll show. They have a lot of experience reading a lot of personal statements, so um, yeah, I'd say focus on that. Great. And when would you suggest starting to study for the MCAT? And do you have any study tips? Yeah, um, this MCAT like, process of studying confused me so much in college because I was like, wait, like, when do you start applying? When do you have to take the MCAT? So it varies um, depending on when you want to um, apply to med school. So um, if you're in college and you want to apply to med school and have no gap years, uh, you want to take the MCAT in your junior year at some point um, and then apply the summer after your junior year. Um, I didn't take the MCAT until um, I was, I graduated college, excuse me. Um, and so I had a different experience and um, I took it in January of the year that I applied. So I had about um, four months or so after I took the MCAT to, um, work on my application and prepare for that process that would open up in the end of May. And so I just said, you know, I think personally, I knew I could not study in college uh, for the MCAT while also taking my classes. Um, that just was not, you know, I don't think that would have been beneficial to me in any way. So I knew I would take it after college. And so you kind of have to have a feel for what you think um, you can handle. And it's totally okay if you don't take your MCAT while you're in college. And um, I studied for, started studying in October of the MCAT before my uh, MCAT in January. And it really was just being consistent with studying. I tried to study five or six hours a day, but sometimes it was less, sometimes it was a little bit more. Um, and I was doing, I did a prep course and that was really helpful. They kind of, you know, I, I only have experience with one of them, so I can't speak to all of them, but they're really good about sharing these little tips and tricks um, that help out. Um, they are very expensive though. so definitely not necessary. There's so many resources that are free online. And, um, you know, I, I didn't even know about UWorld until I came to, to med school. And I guess that's really popular with MCAT now. Um, and I think uh, a lot of people enjoy that and Anki, which I didn't hear about also until I got to med school. But there's some Anki decks, I think, for the MCAT too, that you can check out. And those are all, uh, UWorld is paid, but uh, Anki is free if you use it on your desktop. Um, and I think also one of the most important 
pieces of advice I got for MCAT studying was um, taking practice exams and taking full length practice exams because you want to get a feel for the exam. It's a long exam. And so taking a full length and kind of um, mimicking that experience will really help you on test day and make you maybe a little bit less nervous. Um, and then also testing yourself because I personally like really wanted to do a lot of content review because I felt like, you know, I took bio and chemistry um, like what, four years before I studied, studying for the MCAT. So it was a while. And so I was like, I need to like review all of this, but you end up doing review as you test yourself with these practice exams. Um, because if you get a question wrong, you review it. And if you feel like you need to review that specific concept, um, that's better than reviewing like a whole um, uh, subject. And so um, I try to do as many practice exams as I could. And then also going through every single question, um, even the ones you get right, because uh, sometimes you guess them right. And so you wanna make sure that you got it right because you know the material. Um, and so that is a long process, but it's so worth it because you're learning a lot from reviewing, reviewing your exams. Great, and what are you most excited about for rotations? Um, I've, you know, I've started more recently to think more about this because um, it's coming up um, in about 10 months or so. And I'm actually, I think I'm more nervous and excited to be honest, um, just the idea of being in the hospital and rounding, I think, and doing all these things with attendings and your preceptors, um, getting asked questions that you might not know. It's very, like, I'm, I get really nervous and um, when I'm put on the spot like that. So I am excited though, to get a feel for each specialty. Um, it, I feel like it's not until you're like in it that you really know and, um, you know, trying to see and explore different specialties and seeing um, which, of them I'm mo most interested in. And so I'm really excited about that. And of course, you know, interacting with patients and being part of a care team, even if I'm not personally like, you know, um, doing the, you know, pres prescribing medications or doing any of that, um, it's very uh, nice to have like an experience of, um, you know, after spending the first couple years of school, just reading about everything, you know, actually seeing patients that may have, um, an illness uh, that you've you learned about. So that thing that's really exciting. And how many shadowing slash volunteering slash clinical hours did you have while you were applying to medical school? Yeah, um, I don't remember off the top of my head to be honest, but um, some shadowing I did was through the free clinic I was volunteering at. And um, I also did um, volunteer hours at um, the hospital on campus uh, when I was in college. Um, and that was not really patient. It wasn't a clinical experience because I wasn't, you know, doing anything like medically related with the patients, but I was going around with patients and we had a little art cart and we would, you know, give them activities that they would, they could do, for example, some dialysis patients who are at the hospital for a really long time, um, you know, give them some crossword puzzles or journals to journal in or um, also some like arts and crafts materials. And so that was really cool for me personally because um, it kind of was a blend of like the medicine and art that I, um, you know, really passionate about and really enjoy. Um, but I guess that doesn't really answer your question. Sorry, the amount of hours, it really just like, I think a standard of shadowing is just enough that you think that you have an idea of what being a physician is like. I think med school just want to make sure that like, you know what you're getting into and you have, you and you like the idea of being a physician and know what that's like. Um, it's, uh, I think a lot of people say it's like, it's not really like what you see on the TV. And so it's important to get those shadowing experiences to really get a feel for it. Um, volunteering, I think same thing. It's like definitely quality over quantity, um, being committed to something for uh, a period of time versus, you know, trying different things for, um, you know, a few hours here and there. I think that's really important. It shows dedication. It shows that your commit commitment to something. Um, I guess I can't really give like a, you know, a solid answer in terms of hours. Um, and I don't think there really is, I don't think there is like a minimum. I can't remember if that was the case when applying to med school, but I really don't think there is like a hard minimum of hours that you have to do for any of these. So I'd say focus more on like the experiences and, um, and you know, more quality over quantity for sure. 
Awesome. And how many medical schools did you apply to? And did you apply to both MD and DO schools? And what kind of helped you narrow down your decision? Yeah, um, I think, you know, average, I think people apply to 25. I think that's pretty average for um, applying to med school. Um, I kind of went a little overboard because I was so worried about my GPA being, you know, a hindrance to my acceptance. And so I had applied to 30. Um, and it was, there was a lot of secondary essays I had to write. Um, and it was um, pretty expensive. So that's another thing. If you can, uh, if you qualify for the fee assistance program, definitely apply because I think they give you 25 free um, uh, medical school um, application. You can send to 25 schools. Um, so significantly reduces your costs. But I think generally 25 is a good, a good number. Um, you want to get ideally as many interviews as you can because interviews are what's going to help you get in the door. Um, interviews, I think once you get an interview invitation, that's a really good sign that the school, you know, likes you, they want to meet you and just make sure that you're like, you're what you say you are. Um, and just like, you know, that's kind of what the vibe I got when I went to interviews. Of course, they're stressful, but they just want to get to know you and see if you're a good fit for their school. And also for you to realize if, if that's the kind of the school environment that you want to be in. So that's also important, it goes both ways. Um, and I think applying to med school, you know, making a good list of schools because, um, you know, I had to, you know, I, I knew that my GPA was low and that a lot of med schools have internal cutoffs that I personally didn't know and I don't think a lot of us know. Um, so kind of getting an idea for what their missions are, um, their mission statements and the kind of, you know, priorities they have, uh, whether it was, is it more, about treating underserved patients, which is a big, um, uh, the most one of the most important things I looked for in, in um, a school, or maybe they're a big research school. And because I didn't have a lot of research experience, I'm not personally, I don't anticipate, who knows, this might change, but I don't anticipate going into um, academic medicine and doing research. And so um, I didn't apply to any big, big research schools. Um, and so that's also something to consider when you're making your school list. And um, I did apply to both MD and DO schools. Um, I think, when so when I was getting some advice, um, when I was applying, somebody had recommended that I only apply to DO schools because of my lower GPA. And I think that's just not true. I, I think there is this like idea that DO schools are easy, easier to get into and that's, I don't think that's the case, to be honest. Um, they're both just as hard. They're both just as good medical schools. Um, and um, so thankfully I applied to both because I ended up I ended up not getting any interviews or acceptances for DO schools. Um, and so that uh, would have been bad. Um, I would have just, I would have had to reapply again. Um, so don't, you know, don't think that MD or allopathic medical schools are harder. Um, I think they're just all equally as hard to get into. Med school is hard to get into and um, you have to take your chances. But uh, I think what made it the difference for me um, for not getting any DO interviews or acceptances was I did not do any DO shadowing. And I think that's really important for them. And um, I think I, I tried, there's not a lot of DOs where I live. And so um, I called a lot of offices and they were just not accepting students to shadow. And so, um, if you are considering applying to DO schools, I think that's a big factor for them is making sure that you have an experience with a, a, a DO uh, physician and kind of getting a feel for the different, it's not that different other than like the um, uh, OMM, I think, like, you know, muscle manipulation techniques that they use for treating people, um, which is really cool, but everything else is pre pretty much the same thing. Um, so that's kind of my, um, little spiel about MD versus, MD versus DO. It's not a big difference. Apply to both if you can. Great. And during your gap years, did you do a post or master's program? Um, and is there anything you wish you had done during your gap years that you didn't? Hmm, okay. Um, so the first question, I did not do any master's or post programs. I did consider it. And um, I think my plan B was if I didn't get into med school the first time that I would definitely do a master's or post back program that was GPA enhancing because that was like the, you know, the, um, the red flag of my application. So that would have to be fixed for, before I applied again. Um, and so um, 
there's lots of different programs out there. And you know, sometimes I get asked which one's better if you do a master's or post back. It's really just dependent on your situation, I think. Um, and also uh, there are some master's programs or post back programs that have linkages to their medical schools. And I think that's also something um, really cool about these programs is that, you know, if you go to the program, do well, um, you sometimes have a guaranteed interview when you apply there. So um, if you're thinking about a post back or ma master's, consider looking at those programs. Um, and I guess the second question, um, anything I wish I would have done, I think in my gap years, I think that was the question. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I felt pretty like good about my gap years. It was a time that I, you know, I moved back home. I was back home with my parents, um, which is interesting. Um, I love my parents, but I was so used to like living on my own in college and I was really independent. And now, you know, my Mexican parents, um, I don't know if anybody can relate. They're just like, oh, what are you doing? Who are you with, you know? And so that was an experience, but um, I really enjoyed my time in my gap years um, and working. And that was really nice to kind of break up the studying that I was doing for the MCAT. Um, uh, what else? Um, shadowing and volunteering and keeping that up, but also making some time for some of my like hobbies, um, like running or painting and stuff like that. So I tried to incorporate all those things. Um, so I don't think I have any regrets in my gap years now. Great, and are there any extracurriculars you recommend for undergrad students who are pre-med or any extracurriculars you did that you felt were really, uh, well, really useful for your application process or useful to you now in medical school? Yeah, um, I think, you know, it's important extracurriculars just in general, getting some shad shadowing and volunteering. Um, and volunteering, of course, doesn't have to be in a medical related, you know, um, uh, volunteering opportunity, it could be anything. Um, I think some students do um, like scribing in their gap years. Um, and I think that's a cool experience. Um, you're learning a lot about um, medicine and working with physicians. So I hear a lot about uh, I, see, I have some classmates who are scribes and they come in with a lot of not come into medical school with um, a lot of knowledge and um, interacting with patients in a hospital setting, which I had no experience with. So um, that would have been a, a very cool opportunity. And also you can make some money, which is nice because um, a lot of the things that we do as pre-meds are, are not paid. And so um, uh, med school applications and MCAT, you know, exams are expensive. So it's always nice to um, have a job that's also, you know, clinical clinically related. Um, and also, I think just keeping up with your hobbies, I think, you know, med schools want to make sure that you're, they want like a well-rounded person. Um, it's not always all about the grades. It's not always about um, how many, you know, doctors you shadowed. Um, they want to make sure that you have some things outside of medicine because um, medical school is difficult and they want to make sure that you have those coping mechanisms to get through it. And, um, so I definitely included some of my hobbies when I was applying to med school. And I think I recommend that everybody does that too. Um, and of course, um, it could be anything, you know, that's like running. For me, it was running, um, painting, uh, photography, uh, and then some people, you know, whatever, fishing or um, traveling or, um, yeah. So it, I think that's also important to um, make sure that you keep up um, when you're applying, uh, applying to med school. Kind of along that same that same train. Do you have any advice for the application process or anything that you wish you did differently? Yeah. Um, advice. I mean, I think you always hear the general tips. It's like apply as early as you can. I think that can make a difference um, in your application. Not always. It's always good to have a solid application before you submit. But um, uh, knowing that there is a verification process that takes a few weeks sometimes. And so um, kind of factor that in into like the, your timeline of applying. Um, and uh, also some great advice I got was pre-writing secondaries. Um, you get a lot of secondary essays. And so when you're applying to 25 plus schools, you're writing probably like a, close to a hundred or so essays and they all come almost at the same time, if you apply, you know, they all send them around around the same time. So pre-writing like helps you and not get too overwhelmed by all this writing that you have to do. And thankfully a lot of schools ask similar questions. And so um, you can like kind of, 
uh, re like reuse some of the essays that you write, but you know, make sure that's very specific to each school. Um, you hear some like stories about people doing that and then not changing the name of the school in the secondary. That's that's not good. Um, but um, pre-writing is a big uh, thing that'll help you along the way. Um, and what I mean, if, if if anybody doesn't know what that means, it's just I think after you submit your primary um, application that opens up at the end of May. Um, you can just Google uh, med school application or med school secondaries. And there's always websites or I think Reddit has some or um, some other websites have previous years secondary questions. And most of the time med schools don't change them. So you can start pre-writing them and in, the, in the anticipation of getting those secondaries and they'll just make your life so much easier. Um, what else? I mean, yeah, I think just like taking a time to just like realize that it's a lot and it's, it'll work out eventually right and so I had to always remind myself to stay positive because sometimes I could be um you know so worried about getting accepted and it was nice to have people in my life to remind me that things happen um as cheesy as it sounds things happen for a reason that's what I like to believe and so um things work out in the end and there's always like I said a way to, to med school and that's something I always had to remind myself um during the application season um I'm not sure it's, it's another advice I'd have but um could go into a lot more about like interviews, um, how to prepare for those. You know, there's lots of free resources out on the internet. Um, the Google is your best friend when you're applying to med school. So definitely um, make sure you're like, you know, researching all these things too. Thank you. And there's a number of questions coming in about the financial aspect of like being in med school with student loans and application fees. Um, and did you personally apply to any scholarships or do you have any resources for students looking um, for financial support going into the medical school process? Yeah, um, yeah, that's such a big, like, I knew nothing about loans before med school. Um, thankfully in college, I um, got a pretty good scholarship so I didn't have to worry about that. But, um, and you hear about med schools not having scholarships, right? And that's kind of what I always thought, like I would be just, paying for med school with all these loans, um, which is somewhat true, um, but there are med schools that have um, internal um, scholarships. Um, so when I was applying, I didn't apply to any specific like medical school scholarships, but when I did get accepted um, at my school, they did offer me a scholarship. So um, sometimes that might happen, you know, schools have some money um, to give away to students that they accept. Um, and so, maybe try and find out if these schools have scholarships that you know they give out when students get accepted. Um, and also realizing that most people graduate med school with a lot of loans and that's normal. And I think you know most people are able to pay them back as physicians. And um, so as scary as it sounded to me to be having, you know, going to a school that's kind of more expensive, like a hundred thousand a year is what our annual, you know, costs are. Um, it's, I think it's, you know, it's doable and there's always ways of um, paying back those loans through programs that, you know, through government programs, like, um, I forget the name, but I think it's not National Health Scholar something. Um, you work in a FQHC type setting, um, underserving, uh, underserved patient populations, and they're able to pay back your loans with your time served. Also, military is also no another option. Um, so yeah, there's lots of ways of repaying med school. Um, once you're in medical school, there are a lot of scholarships you can apply to um, within your own school. And I think there's also some you can just Google. Um, that's what I did a lot um, after I got accepted. One that I did get um, that you might want to check out is the Hispanic um, Scholarship Fund. And um, they, they give out a lot of money each year and it's a really easy application. You apply every year, I got it. And um, that was really helpful. Um, and yeah, just kind of applying to as many as you can, right? So, you know, you might not get all of them, but you might get one. Like I got one and that was really nice. Um, and um, again, Google is your best friend when looking for these. And um, that's kind of my best advice for scholarship stuff. Um, Great, thank you. And um, how did you know that you were ready to apply to med school? You mentioned that you didn't feel ready to go like straight from undergrad is there was there a point or anything that made you realize you were ready yeah that's a good question um 
I'm not sure if there's really like a point, but I think um, I kind of just was more thinking like, okay, I had, I took a year and um, worked on um, studying for the MCAT really hard, trying to get a good enough score that like schools could see that while my GPO, GPA might be lower than average for people going to medical school, um, I was still able to show like um, that I was capable of um, learning the sciences and like, um, you know, performing well academically. And um, I could go have a whole other conversation about like standardized testing is not really fair, but um, that's kind of what we have to do right now, right? So the MCAT, um, I think uh, was good for me to show that um, competency. Um, and so when I did, like, I got a score that I was pleased with, I kind of felt more comfortable applying because I felt like that would be a good way to balance out the GPA. So I guess that's kind of like when I realized that, okay, maybe I have a chance um, of, of getting into med school. Um, and I, I think it all just, you know, comes differently to different people. I knew definitely I could not apply to, to med school while I was in college. Like I was, you know, so focused on doing well in my classes. I don't know how people like, it's amazing how students can apply to med school while they're while they're um, in college and taking the M and you know taking the MCAT and doing other classes and extracurriculars. Um, that's that's amazing. I just personally knew that like that was not for me and I could not do that. So I, I just knew I had to do something that would make me, um, you know, most successful and for me personally. And that's kind of what I talked about is trying not to compare yourself to others in their path because everybody has um, different life experiences and different. Um, different things going on in their lives. And so sometimes, you know, there's different timelines and that's okay. Thank you. And I know this is, this is kind of a tricky question to answer because you've been remote for most of your experience, but what are yeah. some major differences you see between medical school and undergrad? I know there are probably a lot, but. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's so many. Um, I think, uh, depending on where you like you your pre-med experience is like um, you know there's like this like idea that pre-meds are really cutthroat and you know not very nice and whatever you know those stereotypes about pre-meds but um, med school has been if I if I'm being honest has been so much better than college I anticipated being like the hardest year of my life um, uh, you know so much harder than like the classes I took in, in college but um it's just a different environment. It's so supportive um, having classmates that um, you can ask questions and we have, you know, um, uh, a group uh, group me, like chat that's going on all the time and people just feel free to, you know, always ask their questions in there and people always respond and that's really nice. Um, having like a Dropbox, like or Google Drive where people put resources that have helped them in the past. Um, so that is not something that I experienced in college. And so that's been really nice. And I feel like it's made all the difference um, in my experience in med school because um, I was expecting it to be, yeah, like I said, it, like, you know, everybody says drinking water from a fire hose and it's kind of true, but, um, you know, people make it out and do well. And um, I think it's important to remember that, that it's, um, it's always possible to, you know, um, get through, it's, you're gonna get through med school in some way. Um, and what else was I gonna say about, um, the question. Um, what was the question again? Sorry, I kind of just like <laughs> went on a tangent there. The, the differences between oh. undergrad and med school. Yes, okay. And so also differences too is that I feel like um, you're being taught in med school a lot of the times by physicians or, um, and that's also pretty cool because you know, you're going to a lecture, a physician comes in and talks about their specialty or it, the information um, that's, if, you know, that they practice every day. And it's nice seeing that side when you're learning and also just making connections with those um, physicians. If they're a really awesome physician that you think that you could connect with, all of them basically have said to us like, hey, once shadowing opens up, you know, just email me. Here's my email if you have any questions about this specialty. And that was really nice. Um, that was a really nice part of, of um, being in med school so far. I've only had a year, right? But um, I think big, a big difference for me was like the support that I felt and all the resources. Med, med school, once they accept you, they don't want you to like fail out. And I feel like for me personally, when I was a pre-med, you know, they call like bio and chemistry, these like, you know, filters or like we to weed people out. And um, I did have 
a few friends who after that first year, they, they were not pre-med anymore. And so I think that's the unfortunate thing about college is feeling like you're constantly trying to not um, get pulled into that and like being like weeded out, you know? So it's totally different in med school. They've invested in you and they've invested in you, believed in you and they want you to stay and succeed. And so that's been um, just really a really nice change for me personally. And going off of that, how do you balance school and your social life and kind of prioritize your mental health so you don't feel burnout? Yeah, that's such a big topic, especially during orientation. They're like, please make time for, you know, all this stuff. And we have mental health, um, uh, like resilience type um, lectures throughout the semesters um, that kind of cover like burnout or, you um, other big topics um, like that. Um, this year, you know, being fully, almost fully on Zoom and in a pandemic, social life was like not really a thing. <laughs> you know, people tried to meet over Zoom and have these like little coffee chats, which are nice. Um, but it, yeah, I, I can't really speak to that honestly because I think hopefully next year it'll be different. But now that we, a lot of us were vaccinated in the early part of this year. And after we were vaccinated, we felt a little bit more comfortable about seeing um, each other um, in smaller groups. Um, and so I think balancing that is going to be a new experience for me next year, but um, definitely, you know, being pass fail, like I mentioned before, has made such a big difference because I'm like, okay, I could go out to dinner with a friend for an hour or two, and or I could study for an hour or two. And will, I, will that hour really make a big difference in the overall picture? Probably not. And so it's like, I always have to remind myself when I'm so stressed about studying is that that time you spend doing something other than studying, like whether that's working out or cooking or seeing friends and family, um, it just like rejuvenates you and then you make makes you feel so much better. So I knew that when I was like bogged down all the studying, um, going, you know, FaceTiming a friend was so nice um, and just talking about things other than like med school, I guess has been nice. Um, none of my like friends um, from, back home or from college are in medicine. So it's like nice to get that break. And um, just reminding myself that in the, in the long run, it's not gonna make a big difference if you're spending an hour a day or two hours a day doing something that'll um, make you feel better or um, make sure that your mental health is um, fine. Because yeah, that's it's a big, um, you know, we see statistics of like med students and physicians have a lot of uh, mental health issues and um, definitely don't, not um definitely trying to <laughs> avoid that as best as you can you know it's um and just doing your best to like nourish yourself and um feel um feel good when in, in, in a very difficult um uh, journey that's you know gonna be for the next you know four years so and based on your experience or your classmates experience how do you think what you major or minor in in undergrad ex affects your um, ability to succeed in medical school? Yeah, um, I'd say it doesn't really influence anything. I really don't think so. I think um, you they have these pre-med class requirements for a reason. Um, so no matter what you major in, you're taking those classes. And so that kind of sets you up for um, success in medical school for uh, the information that they want you to know going into it. And so I think I always tell, you know, some pre-meds that I talk to that major in something that you really love um, and something that excites you and something that you're like interested in and, you know, want to study. And so um, for me, that was psychology, other people, it could be art history or history. And so um, it's important because I think uh, you want something that could be not that I'm not saying don't major in sciences, but um, as a humanities major, I really liked breaking up those like hardcore science classes with um, these really fascinating like psych classes or art history classes um, that uh, just, it gives you a different perspective. So I just definitely recommend you major in something that you love, whether that be bio or chemistry or history, you know, it, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter um, because there are those core requirements that you have to take and that really just prepares you and makes everybody kind of at the same level. Um, so, yeah. 
Great, thank you so much. And we are, we're coming up on the hour. So last question, um, if we and the rest of the Web Shadowers viewers have more questions, um, is it okay to reach out to you? And what's the best way to do that? Yes, um, I'm always available, not always, right? So um, on my Instagram, I love getting messages from students that have questions um, and uh, about applying to med school. So feel free to reach out to me there whenever. Um, and I try to get back to people um, in, my, in my free time. Um, I have a lot of free time, you know, relatively, um, a relative free time right now over the summer. And so, yeah, feel free to reach out whenever you want, whatever questions you have about med school or being pre-med. Awesome. Thank you so, so much, Melissa, for taking the time to present to us and answer all of our questions. We really, really appreciate it. This was such a valuable hour spent with you. So thank you thank again. Thank you so much. And for all the viewers, the Google form has been posted in the chat box. So make sure you fill that out in the next 30 minutes and make sure to follow Melissa on her Instagram. And thank you so, so much again. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys. I hope this was helpful. Um, and and um, yeah, thank you for coming.